Today on Journalism Showcase, how to protect yourself from online fraud. We covered around $100,000 in computers which have been fraudulently obtained. How trades courses at community colleges are teaching their students safety. It would be from, from the entrances falling over. They're fairly heavy, so. And later, how to prepare your vehicles for winter. Down that icy road and you let off the gas, you don't have to touch, touch the brake. And that car will come around and you till five. Hello, I'm Jocelyn Turner. Welcome to Journalism Showcase, produced entirely by New Brunswick Community College students. Throughout this program, we'll be showcasing work from the fall of 2011. For our first story, in 2007, only 3% of students who were enrolled in the trades at the college level in the province were women. Trades like carpentry and welding tend to employ more men. As Mike Trusiak reports, some women are trying to beat the odds. You may not notice at first glance, but women have been involved in trades for years. Melanie Wilson is one of them. Well, I decided to take it because it was just a different, uh, different path for me. I went the academic route. I went to university for four years doing sciences and decided to switch it up. Being the only girl in a class of guys, Wilson was understandably apprehensive about taking the course. That first day, of course, I was nervous. I thought, gee, I'm the only girl. Um, but then, as soon as 15 minutes went by with the guys, you just end up like a big family. Troy Sarchfield is one of the welding instructors at the Woodstock campus. He has noticed more women taking an interest in the trades. From my time spent here in the building, I, uh, I see women in all the trades. The New Brunswick Advisory Council on the Status of Women reported that the number of women in trades has remained stagnant for over 20 years. As of 2007, only 64 of the registered 3,000 apprentices in the province were female. Ashley Bent is one of the few female carpenters studying for her apprenticeship and has been in the workforce for two years now. She says there are still biases towards female tradesmen. It's like an equal playing ground in school, and when you get out in the real world, it's not quite the same. Mm -hmm. They just seem to, more or less, you're a little weak compared to the boys, I guess. Bent admits there are still some preconceptions towards women in trades, but does not believe that taking carpentry was a mistake. In Woodstock, Mike Trusiak, Community College News. About one-third of the programs offered at NBCC are trades. From carpentry and electrical to plumbing, each one offers its own safety concerns. Jillian Trainer has more. Trades are among the more popular courses offered across all campuses. In each trade, they all provide extensive safety training. Electrical instructor Jody Greer says safety is a 45-hour course. We start out, we do uh, what's called safety orientation. So it teaches the students uh, their rights and regulations out on the job site. Uh, we teach them all about personal protective equipment, so hearing protection, eye protection, footwear. This is your load going out to your heater, that's what they call line and load. Last year in New Brunswick, there were about 1,300 accidents on the job involving workers aged 18 to 24. Greer says the instructors prepare their students for the real world. So we're finding that people are coming out uh, enjoying the workforce and not knowing uh, what's safe and what isn't safe and that's a big part of what we do here. Andrew Peterson is a student in the electrical program. He knows the value in proper safety. Well we're working a lot of, around a lot of power tools and high voltage so well, it's important to know all that stuff so you don't get seriously injured. It is mandatory that the Occupational Health and Safety Act provided by the government is covered in the programs. Knowing these skills can potentially save your life. In Woodstock, Jillian Trainer, Community College News. Students are often busy with assignments and studying. It's easy to forget the importance of exercise. Most college campuses have organized activities during the lunch hour and after school. Jill Constantine has more. Canada's most popular sport usually happens on ice, but throughout the province, the game is being played in gymnasiums. Community college campuses in Woodstock, St. John, Moncton and St. Andrews have organized floor hockey games, pitting different programs against each other. I think it's a great way to combine classes and make sure everybody gets along and gets to know the rest of the school. 
Derek Crony arranges all the games and doubles as the referee. I've been doing it for probably the last three or four years now. Uh, it's just it's something that you know, gets the students together. You know, it's a nice way to get some exercise, and and it just kind of helps a little bit. Like I said, just uh, you know, having students from different programs kind of meet each other and, and it just kind of bonds the school together a little bit better. Not all students get the exercise they need. Yeah, I mean, some of us go to the gym, some of us might run, but this is really gets your cardio going and it's, it's fun. If you're interested in getting active and taking part, talk with your local campus advisor. They'll know when the sports that interest you are happening. In Woodstock, Jill Constantine, Community College News. One major concern for schools is safety. Lockdown drills are an essential part of improving safety for staff and students. John Callen reports. These are the sights and sounds of a lockdown drill at NBCC Woodstock. Doors are locked, hallways empty. A lockdown is called if there's a potential threat to the staff and students. And the whole purpose of a lockdown is to, uh, to reduce uh, the targets of availability. Safety of staff and students is a primary concern for Principal Tim Marshall. That is what it's all about. It's, uh, it's about getting ourselves ready and going through an exercise so that we, uh, I guess, do the necessary things to, to make sure that each and every person in the building is, is as safe as they can be. There are a few steps that must be followed to ensure your safety. Ensure doors are shut and locked. Blinds or curtains are closed. Lights are shut off. Lockdowns are an important drill, as important as a fire drill. By staying calm and taking the proper action could save your life. In Woodstock, John Callum, Community College News. RCMP investigates more than 20 online scams in New Brunswick each year. Victims are losing thousands of dollars with each scam. I explore different ways to protect yourself online. Scams are all over the internet, waiting for an unsuspecting victim to fall into the trap. They can come in an email, take over your Facebook, and even trick your friends into sending money for fake causes. Okay, well, I was just, like, getting off work, and my boyfriend asked me, he's like, who's Jamie Lee? So I thought he meant, like, somebody that I went to school with, so I said, so I told him that, and he's like, no, it's you. Hicks says the fake profile even had pictures of her. She couldn't even access the profile. She had friends report the problem to Facebook. She also wrote directly to Facebook about the fraud. Because they never, like, responded back to me, but, like, a few weeks later, like, the profile was gone, so. Hicks never found out who created the fake profile. She says the experience was terrifying. I was scared to death. Because I had no idea what was on it. Woodstock Police. Corporal Carter Stone says Hicks is not the only victim he has seen over the years. Over the past few months, Stone says the Woodstock police have seen many different fraud-related cases. In one case, a number of computers were delivered to an apartment, but no order had been placed. We had a, a uh, undercover, undercover op officer pose as a delivery driver, delivered around 40 laptop computers to this address, and as a result, we uh, obtained a search warrant and did a search of the residence and uh, recovered around $100,000 in computers which had been fraudulently obtained. Stone says the computer purchasing scam started online, tracing all the way back to Ghana, Africa. He says a few vulnerable people were conned into purchasing the computers but never received them. We were able to uh, find out this person involved had uh, actually had a program that made credit card numbers and expiry dates and it would go through tens of thousands of credit card numbers and pick out the valid ones. It was actually using those numbers to make purchases on, online with. Corporal Stone says situations of credit card fraud and identity theft are common online. He says people share too much personal information. Um, because once it goes on there and you press that button to enter it, it's out there for the world to see and it can be found. Stone says we should not open any unfamiliar emails. He says if you do not know the sender, delete it. Opening the message might give a hacker access to all your personal information. In Woodstock, Jocelyn Turner, Community College News. Coming up, Woodstock gets its first taste of winter. Visit our NBCC Woodstock Journalism Team website at jschoolnbcc.ca.
welcome back. Students who get in trouble with the law may not always end up in court. A program at one school is changing how crimes are dealt with. Brad Perry visited the school to learn how the program has had an impact. This Chipman school may seem the same as others, but it is not. It has a unique program that handles students who break the law. Restorative justice, to begin with, is an alternative measures to the court system. The program was brought into Chipman 10 years ago. Seven years later, the school adopted it. Instead of facing a judge, a person charged meets the victim one-on-one, -on -one, but it starts with the accused meeting police. The RCMP, initially they have the discretion to either issue a caution, a warning, send the young individual to alternative measures, send them through court or to restorative justice. Stewart's team then sits down with the victim and the accused. Ashley Lynn Bell is a student facilitator and believes the program is a great alternative. Personally, I've had experiences with other people through it and it really sh gives people a chance to show remorse. Um, just having the victim meet the offender or the offender meet the victim um, really has a strong impact on, on the individual. As part of the program, the accused must sign a contract. It spells out how they are going to pay for their crime. Most times this involves community service. Stewart says a person that has gone through restorative justice is less likely to commit another crime. Of all of the forums that we had run over the past two or three years, only one has ever reoffended. Even though Chipman is currently the only school taking part in restorative justice, Stewart hopes that the program will spread to other schools in District 17 and across the province. In Chipman, Brad Perry, Community College News. All-terrain vehicles are popular in New Brunswick. However, some riders are worried the cost of this recreational activity may soon increase. Jill Constantine reports. ATVing is an activity that is enjoyed by more than 35,000 New Brunswickers. The cost associated with the sport could soon be changing. Registration fees are going up and trail passes may become mandatory to give more money back to the 57 ATV clubs in New Brunswick. Dave Buston is a member of the Sussex ATV Club who purchased a voluntary trail pass. They should be voluntary. Some people stay on their own lands from what I hear. And I have no problem because the clubs do a lot of work to keep the trails open and I have no problem throwing a little bit of money their way. So. But not everyone agrees with Buston. If trail passes become mandatory, more money will be given back to the clubs. They need the money to build new trails and perform necessary maintenance in order to keep the trails safe. So those people who travel the trails and don't buy trail passes don't contribute anything to the maintenance. And we need that money. Danielle Boucher, president of the New Brunswick All-Train Vehicle Federation, was one of the people who presented the changes to government. He says a mandatory trail pass is something they have been considering for a while. And basically uh, it's a way to manage the system better, to make sure that every user that uses the system contributes equally uh, to the trail. The federation also proposed to government an increase to the registration fee. Currently, the cost for registration is $41. The Federation is looking to increase the fee by increments of $25 over four years, bringing it to $141. This increase would bring in an estimated $5 million. Uh, we got to understand every clubs are requesting more trails every day. Uh, there's need for more trails and more access for uh, the user to go on. And uh, basically, uh, we show the system uh, to them that would support uh, trail development in this province at a reasonable rate. But some riders are worried that in the long run they will no longer be able to afford to register their ATVs. I would think that if it goes to $150 then uh, our club will probably be obsolete. I think it's very unjust. We are already taxed to the limit. Boucher explained that Quebec has a well-established ATV tourism business, something he thinks that the New Brunswick ATV community can achieve as well. Currently, the Federation is working on creating a provincial trail system. Jill Constantine, Community College News. The holiday season is a time for giving, but as Michael McDonald reports, even in tough economic times, people are willing to chip in to help others. Charities always depend on community support during the holiday season. But it's not always easy to contribute to a good cause. 
I mean, we do realize that during difficult economic times, donations are are difficult for some people to make. The Red Cross depends on holiday giving to support programs. I wouldn't say that they're down, but they're not way up either. <laughs> Gregory Underhill is a member of the Florenceville Kins Club. Pledges for the annual Christmas telethon are lower than last year. I presume people are just hanging on to the money because they're not sure what's going to happen next month or the month after. The Woodstock Food Bank's busiest time is the Christmas season. We haven't seen a decline in donations, but we have seen an increase in numbers served. Olmsted said the food bank is serving 16 new families a month. Some families only use the food bank during the holidays. Uh, you know, Christmas is a very stressful time. It's a very stressful time for everybody, whether you have financial problems or not. Food banks like this one in Woodstock are available to help those in need all year round, but they do require support this time of year more than any other. In Woodstock, Michael McDonald, Community College News. Coming up, how much does your car say about you? Email us at jschoolnbcc at gmail.com. Your story could be headline news. Welcome back. After a milder than usual fall, we Maritimers know having our vehicles ready for winter is important, and being prepared will benefit everyone. Caitlin Olmsted has the story. Frost-covered windows are a telltale sign winter is on its way. For many, this means getting the car serviced and ready for snow. One of the most important things people can do to get ready for messy roads is change the tires. I put on uh, winter tires, always. Actual winter tires. All seasons? All weather. But all seasons. You gotta be one of the cars in this, in this neck of the woods. Kind of Wiener Brown has been dealing with tires for 40 years. He recommends putting four winter tires on your vehicle. If you choose to put only two tires on, Brown says they should go on the back or you risk losing control. Let's say you just put two winter tires on and you put them on the front. If you're going down a ramp or, 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 or down an icy road and you let off the gas, you don't have to touch, touch the brake, and that car will come around and you so fast. Winter tires have a soft rubber compound. The harder rubber of all seasons has less grip in the cold. Brown thinks a law enforcing winter tires is soon upon us. It's coming. In. Once the once a insurance company take a study on it like they did in Quebec, like they're going to see, okay, with all these accidents, what they have on for tires, and they'll see 80% were all seasons. Ricky Nicholson responded to 42 motor vehicle accidents last winter. Driver distraction is one of the main issues. Many could have been prevented. So slow down, quit texting, quit calling the phone, and pay attention to the road. Brown says when having your vehicle serviced, check all fluids. Also, make sure your wipers are in good condition to keep your windshield clear. The fire department recommends having an emergency kit in your car. A blanket, flashlight, and dry food are essential. In Woodstock, Caitlin Olmsted, Community College News. People decorate their houses with colorful lights, trees, and wreaths in time for Christmas. I discovered a few tips to keep your house in the spirit and stay environmentally friendly. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Well, it wasn't until today. But the Christmas spirit is certainly alive. But with the cold setting in and heating bills on the rise, some people are looking for ways to save money while still pulling all the stops. One option to stay green this Christmas is turning away from the normally freshly cut pine tree and buying an artificial one. The artificial trees this year uh, have really gone uh, quite well compared to last year. Uh, we're on our, I want to say about a fourth shipment now of uh, Christmas trees, but probably another one to come. Wix says more customers are switching to LED lights, hoping to save a little money on their power bills. The issue we got with LED lights is it's uh, we didn't get a whole pile this year, but uh, they were the first ones that people go for. So Homeowner Pat Fullerton also has joined the LED lights trend to save on her power bill, but she still follows some of her own rules when decorating her home. Uh, well, we always turn them off uh, about 10 or 11 o'clock at night, and we turn them on about six o'clock so they're not left on 24 hours. And... Dreaming of a white Christmas? Switching to artificial trees allows for the real ones to remove carbon dioxide from the environment. Less carbon pollution could mean a white Christmas outside and a green one inside. 
And now for our editorial. Cars like the Honda Civic and Toyota Corolla have been some of Canada's best sellers for over a decade now. They're cheap to run, reliable, and in some people's opinions, boring. When most people shop for a car, good value and reliability tend to be what they are looking for. These qualities is what has made cars like the Corolla and Civic some of the best-selling vehicles in Canada. Now, I have begrudgingly come to terms with the fact that the majority of people today see cars as nothing more as a simple means of transportation, or a better word perhaps would be automotive appliance. I think cars should be more exciting. They should exude character either by the way it drives, sounds, or even looks. Now this is not specifically, I'm not really talking about Ferraris and Lambos. I'll use the Corolla as an example. Just look at it. It's boring, ordinary, and so common. Anyone who buys this better hope they have a tracking device because they are going to lose it in a Corolla infested parking lot. A Camaro, however, will never have that problem. It's big, it's loud, it has huge 20 inch wheels jutting out from the sides. Plus, the windows are so small, it is like trying to drive a pillbox. Nothing boring or ordinary about that. Secondly, price. The Civic, for instance, is one of the cheapest compacts you can buy, so almost everyone can afford one. There are many like it, but this one is mine, right? The new Ford Focus is one of the best driving compacts this year, but it is also one of the most expensive in its class. Cars that sell the best tend to be as reliable as your household refrigerator or washing machine. 90% of all Camrys sold since 1995 are still on the road today. I'm sure you've seen the commercial. This 300 though will never have that kind of stat. If it is comparable though to a household appliance, a gas powered garbage disposal would probably be an accurate analogy. So in other words, cars like the Camry, the Corolla, the Civic, they never seem to offend anybody. A 300 though will definitely offend someone. A car, in my opinion, should stir the soul. It should make you feel like a kid. Or love it and hate it at the same time. Now, not everyone is going to buy a car like this 300. It's big, it's loud, it'll suck the oil sands dry in about five minutes. But the fact that it appeals to someone and not everyone is what a car should be. New Brunswickers got a nasty taste of winter during the last week of November. Our Jeff Stairs reported it as the first major snowstorm of the season swept through the province. It started mid-morning with a few flurries. By noon, much of southern New Brunswick was being pummeled by heavy snow. But Maritimers, it seems, took the weather in stride. Can't wait to get my wheeler out and plow snow. <laughs> I gotta turn around now and buy a new snowblower. <laughs> That's what my wife says. St. John and Moncton saw 20 centimeters of snowfall. Fredericton residents Thursday morning were dealing with about 17 centimeters. Most municipalities were well prepared for the weather. We can have an inch of snow back home and the whole country can shut down for a week because they, they don't clear it. So here, you can still get out and get around. So it's much better. It was business as usual here in Woodstock with only a handful of cancellations. College campuses were closed in St. Andrews and St. John, the hardest hit by the storm. As the cleanup begins, keep proper safety in mind when shoveling snow. Keep your back straight and your knees bent. In Woodstock, Jeff Stairs, Community College News. That's our show for today. Stay tuned for other journalism showcases. For more of our work, visit us at jschoolnbcc.ca. Thanks for watching.